Malena Abad Castillo, mm -hmm. uh, who's a teacher and a teacher trainer at the Instituto Cervantes de Villa of Manchester. Uh, she has a PhD in applied linguistics and a research focus mainly on the use of corpora in language teaching and uh, uh, teacher for teachers. Uh, unfortunately, she wasn't able to join us today, uh, but she sent us a video. Um, so we still have uh, her contributions in this webinar. Mm -hmm. Carlos is going to share it. I will, I will share the video she taped for us uh, so you can hear and Let us see know her if, presentation. Uh, it's not possible to hear it. Yeah. Okay. You work. You... Hello, bonjour, hola. Uh, thank you, Alessandra. Is it working? I guess it is. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so we'll play the video from from Malena, and then we'll, we'll come back. And Pascual for inviting me to this webinar, and everybody to come in. I wish I could be in the Q&A. However, I'm glad to contribute. Today, I'll talk about the study I carry out for my PhD, DDL on the acquisition of Spanish lexical items near synonyms and multi-words. I will begin uh, by summing up the theoretical basis of DDL and describing the research context. I will then outline the calendar and course contents, data collection instruments, and research questions. Then I will move to the main point of my talk, the data analysis, and the results of my study. Finally, I will sum up my talk with some conclusions on the study. On this slide, I sum up the theory behind my study. On the one hand, three important theories of language acquisition, in our case, vocabulary. First, Schmidt's noticing hypothesis, which states that in order for acquisition to take place, the target forms must be perceived, noticed. So capture or awareness is a first step, but the learner must work actively to retain that content. Then a Craig and Lockhart with the hypothesis on levels of procession, I we uh, argue, sorry, that there is a close relationship between cognitive depth and retention. The last theory of language acquisition that supports my study is the involvement load hypothesis of the uh, Holstein and Lofa task, which basically uh, says that involvement will lead students to long-term lifelong learning. On the other hand, behind DDL, we find learning theories that support uh, many of the current educational methodologies, constructivism, specifically two fundamental theories, uh, Brunner, uh, Brunner's uh, discovery learning. So the father, uh, the father of the DDL, uh, Tim Jones, considered uh, the student a detective which in, uh, who investigates the data from corpora, extracts uh, patterns, and from these formulates their own rules. The process of building knowledge can require an enormous effort uh, from the student, so they will need help, and this can be found in group work um, with, the, with the classmates. For Vygotsky, knowledge is built through scaffolding between learners and a, a, collab a collaborative dialogue, dialogue sorry, in the search for knowledge. So this is then my vision of DDL. Uh, the study took place at Studio Cervantes, Manchester, and the subjects were senior students for Spanish of what we call special courses, that is, open program courses without a uh, fixed syllabus. The level of the, of the course was in theory C1, but there were students fossilized at level B2. The average of the students was 60, uh, 65 to 70, so quite all senior students. Here you can see the calendar. In the first phase, students worked over two terms on the target uh, content with both direct and indirect use of two Spanish corpora. In the second phase, students use corpora in the independent learning. And these were the target forms of the study. Uh, so there were uh, five types of lexical items, near synonyms, collocations, discourse markers, idioms, and chunks. 
Uh, these were presented and studied in four teaching units developed for the study. As for the data collection instruments, a pretest and a post test were administered at the beginning and at the end of both terms. In addition, students answered a questionnaire uh, at the beginning of the study and at the end of each term. Uh, and in the second phase, in the third term, students used corpora independently, and subsequently five students volunteered to respond to one-to-one -one interviews about the perception of corpora as a learning and reference tool. And these were the rest research questions of the study. Do learners improve uh, knowledge and use uh, of the lexical items following DDL instruction? Which DDL method is more efficient, hands-on or hands-off? Are there any differences between the type of lexical item and the effect of the treatment? What is the learner's perception of the methodology? What is the perception of the teacher researcher? In which ways can corpora help teachers with Spanish as a foreign language? Research question one. Uh, to answer this question, the pretest and post test scores were analyzed. The descriptive statistics of the results of the two terms are summarized on the table on the left side, and they, they are illustrated with graphics. The table underneath shows the results of a pair sample, sample t test with a significant difference for both multiple choice and items of writing in both terms. Although there was no control group, lexical gains in the three groups were, uh, were analyzed. The three groups improved on the post-test. The results were similar in the first term, but in the second term, group two showed less lexical gains. But ANOVA tests were conducted but did not yield a significant difference between the groups. Uh, moving to research question two, the modality hands-on um, showed a, a, a greater improvement in, in all the tests of both terms. To find out whether there were significant differences in the magnitude of change, four variables of change were created and then paired sample t-tests were carried out. For the first time without significant difference, uh, by contrast, in the second term, the test result showed a significant difference in the magnitude of the change between the two modalities in the multiple choice. However, the items of writing did not yield a significant difference. Def therefore, our study does not provide conclusive results to determine which DDL modality is more effective in the learning of lexical items. Let us now look at question three. For the first term, two vari variables of change were created, and then a per sample t a sample t test was conducted. The differences between the magnitude of change or the two types of lexical combinations studied was not significant. Uh, in the second term, the repeated measures ANOVA test for multiple choice did not yield a significant difference among the four types of lexical units. On the contrary, the repeated measures ANOVA for items of writing was statistically significant between the scores of discourse markers and collocations and, uh, and idioms and collocations. Therefore, the items with, uh, with collocations yielded a lesser gain than the other kind of lexical items. However, this is not conclusive. A larger study should, should be conducted to establish whether DDL is less effective for collocations than for Indians of discourse markers. To answer question four, the most interesting one, in my opinion, three kinds of data were collected. First, the numeric data of the questionnaire. And here we have the results of the Likert scale questions on a four-point scale for the DDL activities, hands-ons and hands-off. Although this is a, it is positive for both modalities, we can see the perception is slightly better for hands-on, no, for, sorry, for hands-off in both terms. We also have the like scale results for the teaching units. We show a very positive perception, although it's slightly worse in the second term. Also, we can see the answer 
uh, the answers to the question whether they would use the corpora after the study. And sadly, we see that in the second term, there is an undeniable increase in the negative answers, but it's still positive. The other set of data were the open questions. Here we have the answers of uses for corpora among the students who said they would use corpora after the study. And the most important change in the second term was variety of Spanish, more appreciated at the end of the study. And there are more uses too, as you can see. And here we see the reasons mentioned by the students who said they would, not use, they would not use corpora after the study, mostly time and complexity of the corpora. Finally, this table sums up the main threads of the interviews. The students favor hands-on modality, so different from the, 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 the group. They use corpora for comprehension, learning vocabulary, and curiosity. They report variety, and register as the most useful information provided by corpora. And finally, the comment uh, uh, corpora are interesting and useful. Um, my perception as a teacher is very positive. The students de uh, deepen the knowledge of the lexical unit in aspects such as syntax, collocations, social and sociolinguistic aspects. The, study, the students broaden the semantic dimension in aspects such as connotations, synonymy, and literal meaning. And learners appreciated the importance of learning chunks. Corpora were particularly useful with this, uh, these course markers, and they saw that. And in the three groups, spontaneous discussions came up on the learning of vocabulary and on the independent learning of lexis. I think students learn or improve the discovery and uh, analytical skills, something that they can apply to the study and to other tools. On this side, I sum up the ways corpora can help teachers, and it's a lot. So in spontaneous searches in the class, correction of tasks, material development, exam development, and of course, DDL activities. Uh, in conclusion, we can say that DDL is an efficient method to teach and learn different types of lexical items with both modalities and for different kinds of lexical units. Uh, learners in this study found DDL uh, methodology interesting and useful. More specifically, they, um, they welcome the inductive learner-centered approach Students also appreciated the information provided by corpora, register, variety of Spanish, field, period, or collocations. And students found the, the focus on vocabulary beneficial, and they showed a greater awareness and understanding of the dimensions of words and phrases, depth and breadth. And as commented before, my... Um, my... Um, my position as teacher was very positive. So DDL approach can be extrapolated to Spanish as a foreign language field. A DDL approach, a, the DDL approach can be successful for all the students and for the education, but of course, for the emp empirical control group studies with a larger base of subjects should be conducted. So thank you. Merci. Gracias.